to the Refugees in a New Land podcast from the Times News and MagicValley.com. We're following a refugee family from the Democratic Republic of the Congo as they move to Twin Falls and start a new life. Here's Enterprise Editor Virginia Hutchins. All those English lessons, all those refugee resettlement orientations were leading up to this day. On February 2nd, less than three months after arriving in Twin Falls from a refugee camp in Malawi, Kanigamba Malabwe boarded a bus heading for Jackpot, Nevada. It was his first day of work as a housekeeper at Cactus Pete's Resort Casino. It's not the work he wants to do forever, but he needs this job. Federal refugee benefits are about to start phasing out, and his family of four is about to grow. It was a big moment, so we had reporter Chitona Dunlap and photographer Stephen Reese in the parking lot that morning. So we didn't miss Connie Gamba's first day of work. Um, the, the bus actually shows up at 8.30. Oh, yeah. And um, so they must have picked him up from his home at 8 because there were a couple of other refugees in a van, too. And then so the bus shows up. It's the big, um, the big uh, like, Cactus Pete bus. Um, and, like, a bunch of people get off. Um, people who worked at night. And then... There's other ca- there were other cars that had pulled up and people were you know getting into the bus to go to work okay. and then there was the bus from the CSI refugee. Um, How did Kanikamba feel this morning? Um, you know what? It's kind of hard to talk to him when there's not a translator there, but he seemed you know like awake, probably more awake than me and Steve. <laughs> um, yeah. and I I uh, asked him I kind of like signals like is this your first day and he said yeah the first day held up one finger. Um, oh, oh, and um, there were, you know, quite a few other yeah, refugees that were getting off the bus and getting on the bus to go to work. And then I saw that there was an older guy that got off the bus, and some of the refugees were like going over there and like greeting him. And Connie Gamble went over there and shook okay. his hand. That day brought a big change, too, for Connie Gamba's wife, Beatrice Bahati. Now that he's gone all day, Beatrice is alone in their apartment with their two children, three-year-old Sarah and one-year-old Daniel. She's pregnant. She speaks very little English. She doesn't have any way to get around town and doesn't know many people anyway. And she's stopped taking ESL classes because there's nobody else to take a turn watching the children. Fortunately, Beatrice has Allison Bangerter. Allison, a stay-at-home mother of four, is a volunteer mentor for the College of Southern Idaho Refugee Center. Her assignment is helping Beatrice and Connie Gamba's family adjust to Twin Falls life. Okay. Um, this morning, Allison sent me a text message saying, since it's such a nice day, she was going to take the family to the park. So they went to the first federal um, park. It's like a cool new park with like swing, like different kinds of swings and slides than normal parks. And so, um, at first, Sarah was kind of, like, I don't know if she was scared, but they put her on one of those, like, swings where you could push it, and it, like, like sails across the park. <laughs> yeah. And, like, the whole time, she was, like, very stoic. But then, um, after a while, she went on there with one of Allison's daughters, and she was just, like, smiling, and Allison was counting down before she'd push him, and uh, Sarah was counting down, too, in English. Oh, the great. Numbers. Yeah. Allison's um, really tried to um, help her get out of the house and, you know, like reach out to her because, you know, she's a mother. She knows what it's like to be at home with kids all day. So um, she's been taking her, you know, grocery shopping like she usually does and to the library. And I went with them when they went to the laundromat. And um, because Connie Gamba works, Beatrice can't go to ESL classes no more because there's no one to watch the kids. So Allison's really been trying to like work on her English with her when they're like sitting there waiting for clothes to wash and dry. Um, While Allison and Beatrice did laundry together on March 3rd, Allison gave a pregnancy-specific English lesson. Yeah. 
so, oh, my back aches, my feet hurt, right? So when you are pregnant, lots of times, oh, my back hurts, my feet hurt, right? So when you are pregnant, you can say, I am fine, but oh, my back aches, my feet hurt. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wait. Oh, sorry. Both women have small children, so this lesson got interrupted as usual, but soon it resumed with Beatrice tentatively reading sentences off a sheet Allison had given her. So then the other person might say, Oh no. Oh, I'm so Yeah, so if they are entered the word, she said, Please come here. Come here. Does that make sense? Oh, that is it. I want to come here. Hold your legs and sit down. Oh. Would you like to sit down? So I, I say, would you like to sit down? You can say, oh, yes, I would like to sit down. So then I would sit down. Right? So we say, Nicholas, would you like to sit down? No. He does not want to yeah. sit down. Does that make yes, sense? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> you, okay, sit down. You may sit down. You want to sit on my lap? Oh, you want to sit on my lap? Yes, my lap. With your cars. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. And me too. It's just 30 minutes. Okay, so. I hey! I Right, so I think I will be okay. So I will be okay. Nothing. I think I will be okay. Sometimes you say it that way. I will be okay. Does that make sense? Okay. How? 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 Do you understand that? So when you are pregnant, people say, how far along are you? That means, like, how, how long have you been pregnant? So you could say, mm, for you, eight months? Yeah? Seven months. Okay, yeah. How many weeks? Do you know how many weeks? No, okay. So you can say seven months. You could say 34 weeks, 32 weeks. Yeah. So people, people lots of times say, how far along are you, Beatrice? You can say, what would you say? How far along are you, Beatrice? Okay. I'm 32 weeks. 32 weeks, yeah. And then they might say, wow. Wow. Do you know wow? Like they often do, Beatrice and Allison were making do without the help of interpreter Mary Lapumba, but Allison is fearless. Is it a Swahili English dictionary? Yeah, no, why didn't I think of that like six months ago? <laughs> but the Google <laughs> Translate is so funky. Yeah. It is. It can't, it can't do half of what we're talking about. So, I'm hoping that. Beatrice and her family arrived at the Twin Falls airport in November with all they owned in the bags they carried. And they don't have any relatives here. So Allison plans to do what any good American friend might do, throw a baby shower for Beatrice. And she's asked Beatrice to sing a song in Swahili at the shower, or maybe dance, and teach the song to everyone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Allison suggested that she'll bring some American food to the baby shower, and Beatrice can bring some African food and let people try it. And then we will, we will sing a song, please. <laughs> Mary will help us. We can sing American song, but that, you know, uh, what do we sing? A few days later, Titona interviewed Beatrice at home with the help of Mary, the interpreter. So, have you ever been to a baby shower? And if not, what, what does she think it, it's going to be like? So it's, it's my first time, so I don't really know what to expect or what to think, so anything that comes, I'm okay. Does she feel like she's prepared for her baby to come, you know, like diapers and food and all that stuff? Like, I haven't prepared myself yet. You haven't? I don't have money. Yeah. Does that worry her? Yeah. Yes. Back in Malawi, Kani Gamba didn't attend the births of his first two children. And that's how it usually is, Beatrice and Mary explained. Birth is something for women. Well, it's like, that's how it is back home. I've never seen a man being there when, when someone's giving birth. It's either your mother or your friend that would take you, but not your husband. Your husband would just come in after you've given birth and just come and see the baby. Hmm. It's different here. The man is usually in the room. Does that seem strange to her that? For this baby's birth in April, Connie Gamba will be there because he doesn't have a choice. There are papers to sign, so he's agreed to come along. So why do they do it like that here, where when you're giving birth, your husband has to be there? Why can't you go if I'm alone? Does not mean they can't attend to me? I guess, I mean, the husband doesn't have to go. It's just that they usually do. But I think the thing with Allison is they have to be so careful about privacy that they have to fill out all this paperwork and stuff like it's all so because it's her husband you don't have to fill out that paperwork but if it's anyone else then Connie Gamba doesn't particularly like his job at the jackpot casino Beatrice told Titona the job is difficult and he comes home really tired but the family needs the money with Connie Gamba gone to work and the kids mesmerized by the TV, Beatrice is having some lonely times. Connie Gamba got a bike and does a lot of riding now when he's not at work, to Fred Meyer or the dollar store, or just around town to get familiar with the place. Does she wish she can like join him, you know, like have her own bike and go with him? I don't know how to ride a bike. Oh, but she doesn't know how to ride a bike? Okay. <laughs> If I learn. Did he know how to ride a bike before? 
Yes, please. Okay. Um. Despite some nice spring weather, Beatrice doesn't go out walking with the children. They're hyper and they run around, she said, so she's afraid they'll run into the street. What's her plans for the rest of today? Nothing when I'm done with cooking, I just sit. Hmm. Is she happy? I'm going to throw. Yeah. I'm going to throw. Yes, I do. Why? Why is she happy? I'm going to throw. I'm going to throw. I'm going to throw. Because I woke up this morning and I'm okay. I'm not sick. No one is sick in the house, so we're fine. So I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, a few other moms in Twin Falls understand something about the sometimes isolated life of a stay-at-home mother with small children. Like Allison, Twin Falls mother Miranda Irby is a first-time volunteer mentor for the Refugee Center. Miranda mentors an English-speaking family from the DR Congo with a four-year-old and a one-year-old. And you said that this is the first family you've mentored? Mm -hmm. Why did you want to get involved? Well, originally I started, I just started thinking about it when there was controversy about refugees. Mm -hmm. I'd, I had known that the refugee center was there, but I hadn't really given it a second thought. And then when there was controversy, I just, it just kind of broke my heart that people would come and be met with resistance coming from you know, terrible situations, mm -hmm. and then, so I just wanted to do something to try to help provide a welcoming face, I guess, yeah. a positive, positive experience. Miranda, however, took it a step further by introducing a new idea, playdates. Playdates where refugee moms and their kids mingle with American moms and their kids. Is it just moms and kids who come? So far, um, when I went, it was um, Beatrice and her kids, and there was another mother from Afghanistan who doesn't have a mentor, but she um, somehow Miranda knew like her ESL teacher and invited her, so she was there with her three children, and then Miranda's also like recruiting her friends to be potential mentors. So there were two mothers there that brought their children, but they're not mentors. <laughs> they're maybe considering it. Yeah, they're considering it. They want to like reach out. So. Okay. Titona talked with Miranda at the March 8 play date inside the toy room at Miranda's house. So what was your um, hope with this? Like, what, what did you envision? Um, it was mostly just because I um, had heard that a lot of times. That women that don't speak English very well are very um, intimidated and find it hard to get connected into the community mm -hmm. and make friends. And so I thought it would be a good place for practicing English and also meeting people, and getting some friends, and just getting out of the house. I, I know how it is to be in the house all day with your kids, and sometimes it's nice to get out. Yeah. Stephen, the photographer, dropped in on a February play date at Miranda's house. Um, people have to think about the fact that a lot of these refugees are coming from situations, uh, horrible circumstances that you and I couldn't possibly imagine and then landing in a community that is foreign or alien to them. So it was nice to see the community rallying around um, these people, welcoming these people to the community and um, giving their children an opportunity to uh, socialize with uh, children in the community. How many people were at that play date you photographed? I was at least probably around 20 people, um, combination of uh, mentors for the CSI Refugee Center, um, refugees themselves and their children, as well as other mothers from the community who had brought their kids for who the play date. Who weren't mentors. Who weren't, weren't associated with the Refugee Center. They had heard about it through either church groups 
or interactions with uh, some of the mentors for the refugee center. Okay, thanks. At the March 8 playdate, the women shared hand-me-down maternity clothes. The kids, of course, were more interested in the dog. So after the kids played in like the like a play place um, in front of the house, and after um, they tried getting Sarah to pet the dog, Sarah and Daniel like discovered a playhouse in the backyard, and so they went out there and played, and their mom went out there with them. But when it was time to like leave, Sarah was like devastated and crying, and um, Allison you know, went over there and picked her up and had to walk around the house. Oh, I hope she gets to play again. <laughs> Um, so after the play date they went shopping for the baby shower and um like for supplies for the baby shower yeah for, food, okay food for the baby shower and um they found out that cash and carry sells goat meat and i guess they sell like pieces of goat meat or you could buy like a whole like goat so but um I think Allison is the one that was going to purchase it because, you know, Cash and Carry doesn't accept uh, food stamps, so that's probably like, you know, a gift for the baby showers. She bought the goat meat. As the hostess. As a hostess. And so they went to Cash and Carry and got the goat meat, and then after that, um, we went over to Winco, and um, Beatrice bought like three pounds of cornmeal. She's going to make like um, a dish, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like cornmeal, and you pick pick up uh, meat with the cornmeal and eat it okay. with your hands. So that's going to be served at the baby shower. And on... Who's who's cooking the goat? Is Beatrice? Um, actually, Allison and Beatrice are going to cook uh, Saturday morning before the baby shower. Together? Together, and I'm going to be there. What do you mean by that? And, yeah, yeah. and then the baby shower is going to be later in the afternoon. But something I noticed that when they go grocery shopping is it's a big task because they have all these children and they're all young. Both Allison and Beatrice. Yes, and they want to run around and they want to like grab things. So uh, in the in the audio, Allison is trying to keep the kids entertained by like playing games or singing songs, but it doesn't really work. So. <laughs> but they got the job done. They got the job done. Simon says go. That's pretty good. Simon says, link your eyes. Yeah, that's good. Don't work out. Blink your eyes. Can you do that? That was hard. Yeah, oh, I did. Simon says, blink your eyes. Simon says. <laughs> Simon says, go like this with your ears. Despite the chaos that day, they got the goat meat for the baby shower and the cornmeal. Allison has invited a couple of dozen people to the shower. We'll be there too, of course. Our next episode will take you to the party, and you'll hear about another big change for Connie Gamba. He's already found something better than hotel housekeeping. Refugees in a New Land is produced by The Times News in Twin Falls, Idaho, with Enterprise Editor Virginia Hutchins, reporters Titona Dunlap and Julie Wooten, photographers Drew Nash and Stephen Reese, and digital editor Kyle Hansen. Music by Chris Zabriskie. Find more about this project and complete coverage of South Central Idaho's news at magicvalley.com.